Hello everybody, I hope you're having a super awesome and wonderful day today and I'm super excited about this video because I'm going to be teaching you how to make your drill beats better. So first we'll go through some tips and some interesting kind of sound design things for 808 and then I'll show you how I layered this choir and made it more like wide and dynamic and then I'll show you how to spruce up your drums a bit, I'll show you some mixing tips, some arrangement tips and then how to use automations to make your song sound like any regular song into like this amazing professional beat. I swear to god automations are like what take your songs to the next level and um, there will be uh, chapters for all these separate parts in the uh, sort of like timestamps below and uh, if you just want to skip ahead feel free uh, so enjoy the video so first up was the 808 so I had to do some work with the notes but I did that uh, later in the video and um, I just took the attack up on the like envelope of the 808 so that it kind of fades in like uh, each note fades in and then it gets this kind of like building up effect for all of them it's really cool and then, so I want to add some hand to the 808, so I put this plugin on. It sounds crazy at first. Um, called My Crush by Denise Audio. It's a free plugin. And um, I just took the bit crushing on the low end out, so that we were just left with the bit crushing on the high end. And then it creates this really cool and unique sound. So I just exported like the uh, bit crush version with uh, the My Crush by Denise Audio, so that I could do some EQ work on it, and then take out all of the low end and just leave the high end. This is a really... Uh, like universal strategy is just frequency isolation like uh, make a sound that you want using plugins or whatever export it and then isolate the frequencies so I tried adding some effects who didn't really work and um, to isolate a frequency that you don't like you can just uh, like tighten the band and then move it up and then pull it like across the EQ until you find like something that sounds bad and then just take the band down for it so I was looking through my phone the other day and I saw this really uh, funny old reddit post I think it was a joke, and this guy basically just posted that um, during the middle of a beat, he found out that he was gay, like it, he discovered it or something. I tried to find the post so that I could read more about it, but I couldn't find it anyway. I thought that was funny. <laughs> so uh, working on the uh, chorus here, I just tried some harmonies with the like original note structure. So I just like copied them, moved them up five, to s up or down five to seven uh, semitones, and then. It wasn't really working, I couldn't find anything good, so when you're kind of stuck like that, just change your preset. So I found this cool kind of chanting one, um, but I didn't quite like it, so I just messed around with the MIDI a bit more, and then I decided to layer it, so I added another version of Omnisphere, and then um, just found this really cool, like, choir swell sound, so that it goes, like, it's quieter at the start, and then it, like, goes up into louder, and it complemented the uh, chant really well, because the chant is, like, this sustained, constant volume sort of thing. But, um, Swell is obviously a Swell, so it worked out pretty well. And then I just put them in the same mixer bus, uh, took down the dry a little bit, up the wet to wash the sound out a bit, and then I was kind of done with my choir at that point. <sighs> it's a lot of talking, so it's really late. I recorded, like, a full, um talk through with this, and then it just, like, it, the file was corrupted. So anyway, okay. So, um, if you want to, like, spice up your drums and stuff, you can... Unlike the bottom in the piano roll, uh, you can select either the panning velocity or a couple other parameters. And so the panning is like where it is in your ear. And so uh, you can go into panning and then for each note there will be a little thing there and then you can like change where they are. So you can also highlight notes and then it'll only affect those notes when you um, actually try and like edit something. And I just use that to my advantage here with these 808s. Uh, it's just easy for slide notes especially because if they're all kind of like separated from the rest of the root notes, then it makes it really easy to uh, just edit the slide notes and then make the sound really sort of dynamic without having to put in too much work, <laughs> basically. Um, I was just adjusting uh, the 808s a bit again here through Diablo because I didn't really love how they fit in with the mix, so I was just kind of making it wider and seeing different things. And then for the hi-hats, you can add delay and just put it like a 16th or a 32nd of a note uh, just like a really quick fast delay to make the hi-hat almost sound more like a shaker. And then for some arrangement tips here, um, take the cut tool by clicking C on your keyboard, and then just cut out parts um, of patterns in your arrangement, and then you can just take certain parts out, and then uh, if it doesn't sound good, put them back, or try taking out just one or two of them, and that kind of thing. And then for the 808 here, I uh, it was really clashing, like the frequency, so whenever you notice like a weird kind of phasier 
uh, crunchy sound that you don't like, try and really fix it because it'll ruin your track. And so I figured out that it was the 808 and then just went ahead and fixed it with an EQ. Uh, so I want to like make the choir more dynamic than it was. I was decently happy with it, but not super happy. So I um, made an automation clip of the stereo separation for the choir. And then I just uh, brought it from like mono to stereo. So it sounds, the sound sounds like it's going like this as it plays. And it just adds this kind of dimension to the song. And I don't know, I just think it's really interesting. And I think it worked pretty well. And I'm trying to like uh, work more with automation clips cause I think they're a really useful tool. And whenever I use them, the result always comes out better, especially for like the amount of time they take too. Generally, they don't take super long, especially I usually like think ahead and then um, try different things. So uh, I also had this random roll left over. So I just put some micro shift on so it takes out a mono and kind of like puts it in the side of your ears uh, just so that the rest of the track could kind of have room. And then I just used, uh, if you click like the top of a group of patterns or whatever, and then hold shift and click the bottom, you can right click it. And then where it says uh, change color or change group color, um, just click on that and then it'll give you like two options and then you can fill them both out with colors and then it'll do like a gradient across those. And that's what I did with this, uh, just to kind of make it look nicer. And I felt like it changed how the song actually sounded in my ears when I like, um, made it look nicer. So here's how I automated the um, uh, low pass filter. So it takes out the high end. I just brought Fruity Parametric EQ2 in. You see it makes like this really cool sound um, when you like bring the high end back in before a drop. So I did that a few times. Um, so basically just open Fruity Parametric EQ2, uh, go a couple times over. Sorry, my sleep mode took a few Go a couple times over on like the presets and then just right click uh, the thing or like like the <laughs> the point on the EQ and then do the same uh, on the bottom though with the parameter it's affecting like the little knob and then just right click it create um, create an automation clip and then it's really simple to edit them it's like very intuitive it's exactly what I think so then I put I put reverb on the master as well <laughs> And I uh, just took the wet, dry all the way down, wet all the way up to really wash it out. And then I could just automate how much like the reverb was actually affecting the song. And anyway, last fun fact of the day, uh, I found this really funny looking thing. Uh, this is, I just automated the master stereo separation, by the way, so that I could get more like the motion like this that I want and have more control over it. Um, there is this thing called a salty ocean caterpillar or something like that and it's like it's really interesting it's it has like a bunch of leaves on its back like it looks like leaves it's really beautiful i'll put a picture up on screen and it like eats algae but it doesn't digest them all the way and uh so it uses them to photosynthesize and so it makes its own food like that like makes its own food but it's really interesting yeah that's that's where like automation whoops really beef out a song and make it like pro <laughs> in my opinion i think that's like one of the main differences and um yeah so i really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you had a great day uh sorry if i'm a bit tired <laughs> sorry if the video wasn't super great i think it's decent though i don't know i'm trying to make like better content all the time obviously and let me know if you liked it and if you like the like the writer post thing and you find that kind of thing interesting then let me know in the comments because i'll do more stuff like that and i'll find more fun facts and stuff for you guys and uh yeah so let me know and uh oh if you want to get your music on apple music and spotify like i have i'll put some of my songs on screen um submit it to my website because i'm starting a record label so yeah that's <laughs> pretty exciting and then i also have a spotify playlist that i'm working on too and they're gonna be updated every month so yeah stay tuned i really hope that i can grow this channel i'm really loving doing it and uh i hope that you had a wonderful day today so see you later have a good one carry records out <laughs>